This is my patient, Kim, who I operated on some 11 years ago, and we did a mastopexy with 250cc submuscular mentor gel implants, and she comes in, last I saw her was in 2019, right before she moved to Virginia, and she said, I want to just, a, before I leave, I want a little checkup, so we did ultrasound, everything was fine, and she comes in now wanting larger implants, and wants to know, is everything still okay? So we're gonna examine her today and do an ultrasound and see what's what. I've already set this on plastic surgery, which is my preferred preset for uh, breast exams. I've already put her name in and I put the fact that this is a, a mentor uh, exam for a, a broken implant. So we use a, a warm gel that's in a, a warmer and I'll put a little bit just on the transducer. I usually start at 12 o'clock as my convention. And I'll go here and do the annotations and I've got these set up. So all the things that I would want, and this is a gel implant, so it's gonna say gel implant at 12 o'clock. And now I'm just gonna look around at around 12 o'clock and see what we see. And we already see that there's some overlap right here of the shell elastomer. And there, it looks like there's some free gel. This implant looks like it's broken. And with Mentor, we know it's about 24.2% at, there's a, a hole right there. So I'll stop and right here, I'll move the time bar until I get the exact image that I want, but there's a crack in the implant right there. So I can annotate that, and then I'll just save that image by hitting the camera button. It's really that simple. So we'll continue to look around. We'll get rid of the 12 o'clock, and we'll go to 3 o'clock. I'm going to start it back up with the button on the scanner. And here it just looks like there's a superimposition of shell on shell and this implant looks broken here as well. When we compare it to the other side, we'll be able to see that. So here's the elastomeric shell. I have it so that it's in the middle. I'm at three centimeters or so deep because she's got a fair amount of breast tissue, but that, that all looks okay. I see the railroad tracks of the bilaminar structure of the shell. And then I can see there's a little fluid between the elastomer and the capsule, but that's normal. We see that all the time. I'll take another image there. I'm gonna to go to six o'clock. And start there. Just wipe the gel around. So I, my button on the scanner is what stops and starts in here. It looks okay. That looks more normal. Sometimes we'll see this reverberation artifact where it looks like there's multiple shells, but that's not I know that that doesn't mean that it's broken. So we'll take one Im image there. We freeze it with one button, and then the top button saves the image. Starting it again. So it looks pretty good at nine o'clock, and I'm just going from the areola out <clears throat> to the base of the breast and coming back and forth. So the place that it's suspicious is right up here at 12 o'clock. I'll get one more image at nine o'clock. We'll stop it there, and we'll freeze that. And we save that, and then we're going to start it. And I'm going to go back to the 12 o'clock one because that's where the pathology was. And there it is again. It just looks like there's elastomer sitting below elastomer and a little bit of gel sitting in between. So it looks broken right there. It looks like there's a superimposition of shell on shell. So you see the railroad tracks, you see more railroad tracks, and you see this kind of uh, snowstorm type pattern which is the gel. So this looks broken to me. And we'll save that again. Okay, we'll go to the opposite side now. We'll start again at 12 o'clock. Push the button on the bottom, starts it again. Now here this looks drastically different. See there's just that, those two lines of the elastomer shell and it doesn't have any suggestion of any places where it's discontinuous or discontinuous. So this looks more intact on this side. Uh, 
Oh, this one is upside down. Look at that. Okay. When you see this, the superimposition of a single line below the double lines of the railroad track, this is an upside down implant. So this implants upside down and we see that all the time. You can really see that it looks like when I first was not knowing what I was looking at, it looked like this was broken. But now that I see that it's exactly the same on both sides and it's usually about four centimeters wide and the, the bottom line is more of a single line and the top is more what you see with the elastomer, that's an upside down implant. And that's pretty classic. So we'll save that image and then we'll start again. And we'll see if we can find that again. So upside down is not truly pathologic and it doesn't really matter when they're not super high profile, but there it is again, clearly upside down, but not broken. So we'll look all around with this one. And if I was doing this, the whole thing, so here's at three o'clock, it looks fine. Take an image. The elastomer is all fine there. The shell is continuous. If I see something that I'm worried about is a fold or is it a discontinuity, what you do is you'll push from the opposite side and you'll unfurl it and you'll see that the shell is continuous. So if she has an area that is depressed because it's collapsed a little bit, a compression from the opposite side will allow you to unfurl that and you won't miss a fold and call it a broken implant or collapsed implant. But this can fool a lot of people because it does look like a super imposition, imposition of shell on shell. And this one's merely upside down. And there it is again. It's just upside down, but it's intact. This one's okay and not broken. And the other one is broken. Now here's a fold right here. And I'm, it looks, looks like it's broken right there. If I freeze that and take that picture, I'll stop it. It looks like there's a discontinuity right there. So what I'm going to do is get it running again and I'm going to, push, extrinsically push, and you can see it fill in. Can you see that? You see it fill in? So when it fills in like that, that is not a broken implant. That's just a collapse. And it's usually at the bottom when the patient's laying down or at the top when they're sitting up. And that we see that all the time. That's common. So what I found is that the right implant appears to be broken at the top at 12 o'clock because we see a discontinuity of the elastomeric shell and we see what we think is free gel. Uh, which has uh, kind of a snowstorm appearance on the outside of that. The left one seems to be intact, but it's, the left one is upside down, which we see not infrequently. The more high profile the implants are and the stiffer uh, the gel is, the more cohesive the gel is, the more likely they are to go into the upside down position and, and not uh, flip back. You can usually see that. This lady has grade one capsules on both sides and she looks symmetric. So in the flatter implants, this one happens to be a high profile, but as you get to high profile and extra high profile, when they flip, you can really see it. It's obvious because the breast doesn't have the projection that it had when the implant's in the proper position.